It's time to do 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 another installment of Games of Decades Past. I have listened to your feedback and I decided that from now on Games of Decades Past is gonna be a monthly segment in which every month I'm gonna talk about a game that came out 20 years ago that I have some kind of a nostalgic connection towards and maybe I'll spurs up the month with some shorts of games that maybe don't have as much connection towards but I can still do an informative video about. So without further ado, uh, the game I've chosen for this particular month um, may not be a game I can talk too much about in terms of like its legacy, but the franchise it came from does mean a lot to me and I think now, especially after what happened last year, is very important to me and that's why I'm going to be talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! Worldwide Edition Stairway to the Destined Duel. While Yu-Gi-Oh! was never as popular as Pokemon growing up in Israel, I did watch the anime a lot as it aired in the same exact channel as Pokemon. And I gotta admit, watching this show back is pretty hilarious with a Hebrew dub because they only had maybe six different actors top. So when you see Joy Wheeler duel Kaiba and they have the exact same voice, you can think that the actor may have some, uh, some kind of a schizophrenic episode going on, dueling himself. <laughs> לא תשרוד שתי דקות במשחק נגדי. או, אימא לה, אולי אתה מעדיף אגרופים במקום קלפים. That's what got me into Yu-Gi-Oh! and I wanted to play the game, but I didn't want to invest in the trading card itself, because even when I was younger, I knew that I would just dump a lot of money into it, and I just refused to do so. Because I knew I can get addicted to trading cards. Uh, when I was even younger than when Yu-Gi-Oh! came out, um, every year, remember, there was some kind of a fad that was going on, like, with collectible trading cards or stickers or what have you. Uh, I think the one I remember the most, um, was collecting, um, Mortal Kombat stickers from Mortal Kombat 2. Uh, there was, like, an album, and you had to fill the album with, um, with the right stickers, because there were, like, empty squares in which you have to put the specific numbered sticker on. And I remember just spending so much money. Just remember, my mom was not very happy about me wasting all of that money. Um, so, and, and she never told me she was upset at me. I actually grew, um, my conscience spoke to me that I just didn't want to do it anymore. Like, I had a little Jiminy Crick and just told me, stop. So, I decided that instead of buying all those Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and even Pokemon cards I didn't play, I decided to just play the video games, which is how I uh, got to playing uh, Stairway to the Destined Duel. And the reason why I love this one the most, at least from the original era of Yu-Gi-Oh! is because I got to play in my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! arc from the original anime, Battle City. You know, the one with Marek Ishtar. A.K.A. the best villain ever! Because yeah. <laughs> uh, the problem with a lot of the other Yu-Gi-Oh! games is that their structure, like how, they, um, how the user interface works, is that uh, you go to a menu, you click on an avatar or like a portrait of a character, and then you just duel them a few times. Which is kind of similar to this, but at least this game gives you a better scope and structure of you being a, a, a duelist in Battle City, and you have to roam the city around and choose where to go. Um, and there's a lot of different characters you can duel against, like Yugi and Kaiba and Joey and Taya. Which is really weird because Tia in Hebrew, she was actually known as Tia. Uh, I never really understood that, but I digress. There's also weekly tournaments that you can battle it against a specific duelist to win unique cards. Um, and just it's just a game that you can just spend hours and hours just perfecting your deck and just dueling multiple times. And for its time, especially since this game is now 20 years old, um, I spent hours on this and it's just a lot of fun. Though obviously, you know, looking back at it now, um, it's very primordial because Yu-Gi-Oh! has advanced significantly since. In every generation of Yu-Gi-Oh!, and I'm saying generation like, you know, an anime series per se, they introduced a new mechanic. Like, say, in Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, they introduced Synchro Summons, or in 
Zexel introduced the X's summons. Uh, X's, you know, XYZ. I mean, I guess they just have an issue with zippers in the Yu Gi Oh universe or something like that. Uh, but the point is, this is the most primordial and basic Yu Gi Oh game you can buy. And I think for a beginner, someone who doesn't know about all this other stuff that I just mentioned in the past uh, 20 seconds or so, this is a good starting point that I would highly recommend. My only issue is that the game is very easy to break in a sense that once you have the perfect deck, you're absolutely unstoppable. And yeah, every time you win, you get five cards and a lot of the time you just get, you know, bad cards. But there is a thing you can do in the options menu that you can input an eight-digit code that lets you unlock every card you want. Uh, and if you actually collect the cards, those codes are on the cards themselves. But for someone like myself who never, you know, invested the money into them, I just needed to look into Google, put the name of the card that I wanted, get the eight-digit code, and bam, I get the card. You can do it with essentially every card. You can just make your perfect deck here and there. Um, so it's very easy to break. I haven't done it myself until recently when I was capturing footage for this video, because um, I eventually managed to get those cards through just sheer luck and just playing this game forever, but it's also very grindy. That's the thing. A lot of the events that happen in this game are only occur when you have a certain amount of points requirement met. And if you don't have the right amount of points, you just have to do the same um, opponents over and over. And you can get dull after a while. So that was kind of a way, in a sense, to speed it up. So this is the kind of game that I would recommend for beginners, but also for those who are willing to invest the time because there's a lot of grinding to do. After that, there's been a little bit of a lull when it comes to my Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, playing uh, days. I watched Yu-Gi-Oh! GX um, since I kind of dropped off Yu-Gi-Oh! halfway through the darts arc, like the Leviathan stuff with the Vikers and what have you. Um, but I did watch GX and I really enjoyed GX. Honestly, I actually like it more than the original show, uh, but I never finished it. I think I got halfway through Season 3, but I did play the Game Boy uh, GX game, and I thought it was really fun. It was very similar to Stairway to the Destined Duel, except that you're in Duel Academy instead of uh, Battle City, and you get to battle, you know, GX characters like Jaden, Bastion, and of course, the Chaz. Everyone loves Chaz, because Chaz it up! I mean, he's the best character in the show. Um, but then, just, I don't know, maybe I kind of Yu-Gi-Oh'd out, and I think 5Ds did it to me. Because with 5Ds, just the idea of card games and motorcycles was incredibly stupid. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of stupid things even in Season 1 of Yu-Gi-Oh! and GX. But the idea that in a card game, you know, where you have to sit still and like look at your uh, field and think carefully where how to strategize, driving a vehicle that goes for like 150 miles per hour kind of contradicts that. So that just ruined my immersion and I decided to drop that season even though I heard from some people that 5Ds is the best Yu-Gi-Oh show though I find it kind of hard to believe to be honest and I never watched Zex Solo Arc 5 all that stuff I'm bringing this up because what brought me back to Yu-Gi-Oh at the time was Legacy of the Duelist uh, for PS4 and later got it for Switch and then I got it again on PS4 when all the Switch editions uh, came out on PS4 and I honestly say that as much as I love this game here, Legacy of Duelist is probably the best Yu-Gi-Oh game to play if you want just single-player Yu-Gi-Oh. Because you have story content from every single show, from the original to Yu-Gi-Oh! of Reigns, which was the newest show at the time. And not only that you have, like, hundreds of different story chapters to play through, but you can also do a reverse battle that gives you, like, an interesting what-if scenario. For example, did you ever want to see what would happen if Kaiba didn't lose to Yugi in their Battle City Tournament match? You can do it in that game, which is pretty cool. And I also like using the story build decks because just like in Stairway to the Distant Duel, I found out that when you, the player, have reigns of creating the ultimate deck, you can just shut down the AI. So I like when the game, the developers give me a, a deck that's very similar to what the character used in the anime. It also adds to the immersion too because... I think it would be very weird for me to play, you know, as Yugi and then make my own deck and then I have a bunch of insects, for example. It just doesn't really feel right. So I thought it was more organic, but also more challenging as a result. 
Um, and then I took a break and I didn't get back into Yu-Gi-Oh until it was um, 2022 where uh, the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh, Kazuki Takahashi, passed away in late June in a um, scuba diving accident in Okinawa. And uh, he left um, a huge legacy of adoring fans behind who grew up on Yu-Gi-Oh! And the reason why I'm holding this game today is because of that event. Because... I, 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 this is the Yu-Gi-Oh! game I spend the most time on. Probably second only to Legacy of um, the Duelist. But this means the most to me in terms of my childhood memory of Yu-Gi-Oh! And I really wanted to own this game complete. I buy a lot of complete games on Game Boy Advance because it's just one of my favorite things to collect uh, as of late. But I wanted to have this one in particular because of how much this game meant to me and how much I appreciate what Takahashi-san gave me and other Yu-Gi-Oh fans out there. Whether we watched the show, collected the cards, or played the games, um, I owe him an immense amount of gratitude. I also played two months straight of Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel on my PS5, and I learned that playing online against actual people is much more difficult than the AI would ever be, because it's either you make one of the two or three best decks in the game, or you just lose automatically. And that's kind of the problem with playing online Yu-Gi-Oh! Because you need to know what are the best cards, and if you don't know, uh, players can just lock you out in the first turn, um, and just, you're completely um, out of luck, so to say. It, it was really pretty fun to play in that game for a while, and one of the main reasons why I also stopped is because I also found that because I played on my OLED TV, is that having the... Um, the layout of the board on my TV, 8 plus hours a day, uh, left a burning on my screen permanently. And I implore you, if you do want to play Yu-Gi-Oh, make sure to take breaks and change the screen to something else that's not Yu-Gi-Oh, so there's no imprints on the screen or burn-ins or anything like that, because uh, that's pretty bad, but... Doesn't take away from the game itself. It's not, it's not the game's fault. I just I should have been more cautious of anything. But if if anything, is a testament of how addicting and engrossing Yu-Gi-Oh can really be, and even more so than just playing the Game Boy Advance game. This is more of a thank you for Takahashi-san for everything he has done. Rest in peace. Thank you for everything you poured into this franchise. And until the next duel, that's game.